and welcome to the Everyone Active podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Joe Hancock. And I'm the other host, Michelle Laurie. Hello, how are you? Hello, hello, hello. Really good. The uh, series of guests. Special guests. Yeah. Should we have a drum roll for our special guest uh, today? How many times have you been sitting next to okay. a gold medal winner? Okay, <clears throat> we do have <laughs> an Olympian. <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Welcome, team, to our lovely Macy Summers Newton. Hello, 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 hello. hello. How are you? I'm good, are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Hello. Thanks oh. for coming into the mayhem, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> what people haven't seen behind the cameras is poor Macy has been sat here while we have been chatting away she yeah it's best that you understand where we're from really and but we're just here and thank you so yeah, so much thank for you. coming You're along welcome. we're so thank excited to chat so about excited your journey yeah. also your relationship with ea that we're talking yes. about the sporting championships uh, your training and then also what what's the next aim what's next aim? but we're going to start off with that yeah. how are you How's your day been? How's your week been? How's training going? Um, yeah, I'm really good. Um, we're currently in like the middle of like a big winter block and that is the hardest part I think in swimming because we're up at 4am, it's still pitch black, it's oh. freezing cold and then we go and do our things like people in my squad, they're either going to school, I'm going off to uni in the day and then by the time I leave uni and go to my next session, it's like half five, six and, it's and dark then it's still again. dark. So, Goodness yeah, you don't me. really see much of the light. And when you do, when you are at home, you just want to nap half the time because you're so tired. I bet you do. Um, but, yeah, no, it's going well. And yeah. is that seven days a week you're doing that as well, um, the training? Yeah, so I train eight times a week. Goodness um, me. I train doubles on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then the rest of the time I just train in the evenings. And then I have Saturday mornings as well. And even though we train eight times a week, I do have a day off. So Sundays <gasps> are like my big rest day. Oh, they? <laughs> is that <laughs> the, as much as possible? Is that the day in bed or is that the, heck, I've got to catch up on uni work um, day? No, it is probably the day in bed, yeah. I think because of how organised I am kind of with swimming and how like it's such a routine, I've always kind of been stuck in my routine like since I was a little girl. So yeah, I am quite organised with it all. But yeah, Sundays are usually either shopping chill with the family or just eat lots of food <laughs> love that do you I'm want to give a it. shout out to your squad and the pool that you train in yeah hey guys hey everyone <laughs> everyone active Moulton um and Northampton Swimming Club you're all the best <laughs> oh my goodness we've got so many questions to ask you right. so let's start at the very beginning yeah so what for how did you first realize that you had well not only a passion for swimming but a real aptitude to swimming how did that sort of happen um yeah so I come from quite a swimming family right um, my mum and my uncle were both swimmers, um, not very like high level, but they still swam. And um, my granddad was county president for oh Northampton Swimming wow. Association. So yeah, we were quite swimming kind of orientated. So I think when I came along, it was kind of inevitable that I was going to swim at some point. Um, I don't think it was in their minds that I was going to be like, become this Paralympic champion or anything like that. Um, but yeah, no. Um, Do you so, remember how old, or have you been told how old you were when you first went into um, a pool well I mean we used to go on holiday like every summer so I think you know I was in the pool every time then and I think that was kind of the main catalyst to make my mum want me to start swimming lessons properly because right. you know she wanted to be relaxing by the pool yeah yeah you yeah. don't have to worry about me and my sisters like drowning or anything um so I think I was like five or six when I very first started like proper swimming lessons really yeah um I think that's like I think that's kind of the right age, you know, you're starting school, you, yeah. you're kind of ga gaining some independence slightly around the pool. And so. did you have swimming lessons within your school curriculum or was it something that you did um, as an after school no, thing? No, yeah, it was definitely something I did after school. Yeah. Um, I started off with Wellingborough Swimming Club. Okay. Um, they were kind of the club that um, my family were kind of... Yeah, Affiliated to yeah, sort of thing, yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. um, that's what kind of where it all started, really. Um, obviously, when you're that age, you only swim like once or twice a week. So it was just so much fun, you know, you're only in the pool for half an hour or so chat with your friends, splash around, but also just learn like the basic life skills. Cause me and my coach, we always say whenever we go and speak to people, you know, swimming is the only sport that can really save your life. Yeah, you absolutely, are, yeah. If you yeah. are in some type of trouble in the water, you know, if you know how to swim and if you know like basic life saving skills, then yeah, it can yeah. save your life. So at the end of our previous series, yeah. we had our national swimming and aquatics manager, didn't we? Yeah. Manager. <laughs> and she's, yeah, the statistics about yeah, it's, like, the amount of lives that can be saved yeah. if you learn to swim, the amount of accidents that can happen over a summer period, yeah. rivers, reservoirs, sea. Like swimming is it, a fun, but it is an absolute yeah. skill. It's, it's actually it is yeah, a it's, an, it's a necessity, 100%. isn't it, yeah. really? 
Like even when I go on holiday in the sea, I can't stand swimming in the sea because I'm just really? so used to the chlorine and like so used to seeing like two meters below me is the floor. So when I'm in the sea, I'm like, well, this is so different. There's waves. You can't see the floor. It tastes so salty. I can't stand it. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> um, and the but the no, current, yeah, the yeah, it's like yeah. completely totally different, different thing. So it? I even yeah. think if I was in the sea completely by myself, I would be really scared, even though I do all the meetings. Really? So yeah. I don't. I know. I know how to like float and everything like that, but. It just shows like the complete difference between a normal pool and the sea. Yeah, it is really dangerous. But wow. if you've got the basic skills, then... And then do your sisters it. have an aptitude for swimming as well? Yeah. Wow. Um, so I've got two sisters. One's 19. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hi, Bum Pia. Um, and one's 17. Um, they both... They, we, all, we all started swimming at the same time, really. So they started a lot younger than me. Um, uh, they're both able-bodied, so they don't have dwarfism. Um, Pia, she would kind of... She finished swimming two years ago now. Um, she just finished her GCSEs at that wow. point. And I think she wanted to, you know, get out there, be a bit more social because swimming, it does take away most of your social It's a real life. commitment, isn't it? Yeah. And it's like five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, she was a brilliant swimmer. She got to British Nationals, um, regional champion. Goodness so, man. yeah, she's brilliant. But I think there comes a point where you're like, right, I'm just going to be 100% dedicated to it. Or, no, I just want to I just want to live my life a little bit more. Yeah. yeah, and she kind of stopped then. And then Bo, uh, the middle sister, she stopped a little bit earlier than Pia. Um, how old was Bo? I think she was just starting secondary school. And again, you're meeting a new group of friends. You're wanting to go out. You want to just chill with your friends a lot more. And, yeah, she, they, we were all... Well, they were really, really good swimmers, but for them, you know, I think it was just about not having that 100% yeah. dedication. It's just lesson. such a big sacrifice, yeah. isn't it, to Massively. everything? Yeah, and I think I've just done it for so long. I don't know anything else. It's just yeah. kind of, yeah, almost just yeah. ingrained I was gonna into say, you. Do you remember when you had that switch of, actually, I want to do this? I um, want to, this is my thing. Yeah, it was definitely the London 2012 Paralympic Games. You know, I think for everyone, they were quite a, they were just an amazing moment yeah. in sport for Paralympians and Olympians as well. And um, These pimples. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. And, um, well, in Swimming Club, they were really, really kind to me and they got me and my mum two tickets to go and watch. Right. Um, so we went to watch the swimming there, obviously, and just to watch all the para swimmers. And it wasn't even just the swimming. I think it was just the whole kind of environment. The, the atmosphere was electric, was, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. Oh, it was, I was only 10 at the time. So I think being so young just to watch it. And yeah, that was when I was like, yeah, this is what I really want to do. And yeah, I just tried everything I could to try and get that's to the amazing. same place. I think that's a massive point that you've just said. You were only 10. Yeah. So it was <laughs> like parents, carers. Yeah. Like taking kids yeah. to live events, taking yeah. them to sport, taking them to see it yeah. actually in reality. It's so important. In a competitive yeah. scene. Yeah. yeah. Could literally change. Could be the inspiration, couldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, my little um, stepbrother, he came and watched me for the first time at the Commonwealth Games last year um, and at our World Championships this year. And um, no, he didn't come to the Commonwealth Games, sorry. He just came to the World Champs last year and um, this year. And um, yeah, he, he was just so inspired. And I think watching then, he actually understood what parasport was about, yeah. what I'm actually doing. Because he's like, Maisie's going to train so early and now Maisie's going in the afternoon as well. And I think he realised what, I'm actually training for and what it's all about. He could see the end really. game of yeah. it kind of. What and I think appreciating as well the different types of disabilities that he could see as well and seeing how hard people have to work. And I'm a bit biased, but I sometimes think that we have to work a bit harder yeah. as well yeah. for some people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, he could just see it all. And, and that inspired him. You know, he's gone back to school, telling everyone about it. He started oh. swimming lessons himself. Oh, so, wow. yeah. How old is he? Uh, seven. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. Hi. Hi, Jonah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, I think it just shows how important it is. And, yeah, it can really inspire anyone. Definitely. And yeah. the exposure. And we're going to tap on to... So he knows that you get up at five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. In fact, four o'clock if you're in the yeah. pool at in five. In the pool at five, yeah. So talk us through that routine. Talk us about your training. Yeah, how, your, your nutrition, all that kind of yeah. thing as well. Um, so I train every evening from half five to half seven or eight o'clock. So two to two and a half hours. Um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm up at four and I get in the pool at five and I get out at seven. So all of our sessions are two hours long. And when you're in the pool training, is it just, are you just pounding through the laps or what, what, sort of, what does that training um, look like? Is it different for each day? Yes, yeah, so we have right? like three or four what we call key sets. So they could be like, you know, working on your speed development or VO2 max. So it's like really getting your heart rate up for a really long period of time. Um, threshold which is like training you're on like quite a fast pace with small kind of intervals like uh, right. rest intervals um so yeah they're kind of like our key ones and then sometimes as well we're a club that's very based around um 
building like your aerobic fitness. So just being able to swim, like we could do 10 400s just at a relatively easy pace, but just swimming and swimming and just building that fitness because wow. swimming is just, I think it is so based around fitness, you know. Depends if you want to be a 50 meter swimmer and just absolutely sprint one length. Yeah. I think you've still got to have some level of aerobic kind of capacity. Absolutely, yeah. Um, but, you know, we're very based around 200s, 400s. Some of the guys that I swim with do 1500 meters and I'm not that far. <laughs> oh my yeah, God. I don't do really? that much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, it just shows how fit and like strong we are really as swimmers. Um, what else do I do? So, uh, yeah, I, I'm at university at the moment. I'm in my last year. I'm doing primary t uh, education, so I'm training to be a teacher. Oh, wow. Um, so, yeah, I'm balancing that. Can Sunday. you just imagine <laughs> the kids who get to have you as their teacher? They're going to be yeah. absolutely gassed um, up. I've been on four placements so far. Oh. Um, I've got my last placement coming up in January. Um, and... Yeah, it's, 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 it's incredible going in there and like okay. telling them about my sport. And as well, the main thing with me is not only about my sport, it's them seeing someone like me at the front of their class teaching them. And then hopefully, you know, in a month or however long it will be time, if they see someone else like me walking in the supermarket or down the street, I'm just hoping that, you know, they won't bat an eyelid. They'll just be like, oh, that's just like Miss Summers Newton and just change that perception of people with disabilities and, you know, with dwarfism, but any type of disabilities and just raising that awareness for the children as well. And hopefully, yeah, we can kind of change perception on disabilities, which I think is quite important. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's kind of what I do in the day when I'm not swimming. Um, nutrition wise, uh, I'm kind of someone who, <laughs> I just think- safe space, space, okay. yeah. we, we won't, we won't <laughs> air this if it's bad for Personally, you, Personally, okay? <laughs> you know, I just think we're all human. You know, you've got to eat what's right for you. I think everyone's going to be different. I'm someone who just eats everything within moderation. You know, I'm not going to sit there and eat 10 burgers at a time. But if one day I fancy a burger, then I'll have the burger. You know, yeah. I'm not going to restrict myself. Um, I don't think my diet, to hopefully, doesn't affect my swimming too much. Um, and as well, you know, we're females. Sometimes we need that bit of sugar. Absolutely, um, yeah, totally. We need just to have a treat day sometimes. And I think sometimes when you put that extra amount of pressure on your eating and your diet... I think for me, I've tried it once. I tried it before the Paralympic Games and it was just another thing I had to think about, right, another yeah. thing I was stressing about. And to be honest, I don't think it worked. I didn't swim as fast as I would have wanted to. And since then, I've just eaten what I've kind of fancied and I've swam well off it. And, you know, before competitions, yeah, I'll think, oh, I don't think I'll like, you know, have a McDonald's or anything like that within the next month or so before competition. I don't have them anyways that much, but... Um, yeah, you know, it's just about eating everything in moderation yeah. and when I want to eat it. Yeah. <laughs> and just on that note, we spoke about it with Rory. Yeah. Is, you're saying we're females, we have a hormonal yeah, cycle. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> let's say it out there. Yeah. yeah. Our hormones change weekly. 100%, yeah. And the more people that recognise that, the more people that understand that. Yeah, totally. So our stamina is going to be different yeah. week to week. Our muscular capacity is different yeah. week to week. So that's when, when Mace is saying, yeah. you might need that hip sugar. 100%. Our hormones change. <laughs> yeah. And it does count. It counts towards yeah. our fitness and also exactly. how we're feeling yeah. mentally as well as physically. 100%. So Amazing. Yeah. And what is it, if you could pinpoint something about swimming that sort of really that you love more than anything is there one particular thing or is this sort of the camaraderie of being in a team or, or what what sort of is it that you like um for me personally I think it's the freedom of it um one of the reasons why I well my mum put me in with uh, swimming is because it was like freeing on my legs it wasn't causing right. any impact or pressure like running or um cycling wood on my knees and my ankles so um I just love how free it makes you feel like you're floating along the surface um, there's no distractions. You're just going through the water at your own pace and floating, yeah. <laughs> speeding. <Yeah. laughs> I mean, floating sometimes. We might float. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. And some days, you know, you can have an awful day. Like you've stressed with uni, or you're feeling tired, or like you say, it could be that time of the month. And um, you just you just want to block everything out, go for a swim, and after it, you feel so much better. You've just had your time to think about what you want to do. Sometimes, you know, my coach will say, we'll do however many lengths, and half the time I've forgotten how many lengths we've done yeah. because I'm just in my own zone, and I'll have to chat to my teammate or be like, how many lengths have we done? Because I'm not quite sure. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I think it's just the freedom that I like about it. Amazing. Yeah. So when you're training, so at the minute you're training for getting into some, you've got a really yeah. exciting event coming. So tell us a little bit about the event you've got coming up and um, how that training is maybe different to what you do usually. Or is yeah. It the same? Um, so in April, we've got our Paralympic trials, um, which is like the event which I have to hit a certain qualifying time in order to 
make the Paralympic Games team. Um, so before it like basically leading up to that competition, we're going to have loads of different meets where it's basically like practice. Right. Um, just get exposure to racing, um, see what my times are like, see if there's anything we could improve and put it into the training kind of program. Um, but yeah, so this weekend I'm going to race in Rotterdam. Two weeks time, we've got our winter festival, um, which is just like a fun kind of winter meet, which is lovely to do before Christmas. And then hopefully I'll have a few more in the new year, like our county championships. Um, but yeah, it's just basically keeping things ticking over, keep doing what I'm doing. And yeah, hopefully it will kind of pay off in April. And are you always sort of in, in the quest of trying to beat your own personal best? Is um, that sort of in the back of your mind all the yeah. time? Because obviously we've got, you know, records being broken yeah. by you and that kind of thing. No. <laughs> should, we, should we just let you list your achievements? Please do. <laughs> like, go for it. We've okay. never First really all, like... Uh, so how many gold medals have you won, please? Uh... As in, in total. Well, first let's do total, and then let's do as the an breakdown Olympian. where you got them yeah. from. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not, not sure. sure. Uh, Joe, how, Joe how, many, how many goals have you won? That's zero. No, no. If me I well. name them all, then maybe we'll be able to. <laughs> okay, let's one. go. So I got two Paralympic medals. Paralympic gold medals. Gold yeah. medals. Woohoo! Um, this World Championships, I got two gold medals and a silver medal. <laughs> so exciting. Um. Where else have I been? Last year, I got, I want to say, three gold medals and a Be silver. Because, because Macy We're can't remember, because there have been too many gold <laughs> medals so far. Um, World Championships 2019, I came away with one of each, so three medals. Wow. Eight gold. <laughs> um, and then Europeans 2018, um, came away with four medals there. I think it was two gold, three gold, one bronze. Wow. And then my Commonwealth Games medal, so gold there, so. 12. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And my next question is, um, where are they? Because you haven't beat them in. Yeah, I'm sorry, I haven't beat them Let me just say, we're <laughs> devastated. Although, I'm going to oh, say. Oh, okay, Joe, tell your so story. So it's at the Queen's Jubilee. Yeah. Up in Moulton in Northamptonshire. Yeah. Just round the corner from where I am. Yeah. You came and lit the torch yeah, lit the for beakers, us, yeah. and I was that person going, please, can I have my photograph with you? Please, can I have the gold medal? And then let's tell the listeners, when you mentioned it to Maze this morning, did she remember you? No. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Devastating. It's it's okay. Savage. Savage. There was lots of, there was a lot there. of people there. There was a fair. lot of people there. <laughs> and there was only one gold medalist oh, that's there. that's true. Yeah. There was only well. one gold medalist. Do you have a favourite gold, or do you have a favourite... Silver, bronze, like, was there um, a... It's definitely, I think, my Paralympic medals. I think they're, like, it's just, like, the top it's level so you special, can get isn't to. It? Yeah. Um, and, you know, when I was there in the heat, I had my world record taken off me by the Ukraine and the American girl. So then in the finals, you know, I really had to kind of push it on and try and get that back. Um, so I was going into the final in third position, I think. Right. Um and then, yeah, it just, I don't know what happened to me. It just all came together. And I think I was just so driven to try and get that medal and get my world record back. And I did. So, yeah. And I mentioned it to know, I asked, we interviewed Rebecca Adlington um, a, a few episodes ago. When you're in the water, do you, can you feel that you're swimming a good race or are you just stroke by stroke? How does it, um, how do you feel with it? When, so it's difficult. So when we're like swimming kind of in normal open meets, I'm racing against able-bodied people. So I right. don't really have anyone to kind of right. race off. So I am kind of racing my own race. And sometimes that is quite difficult. Sometimes I'm like, oh yeah, this is quite good. I'm kind of keeping up with them. Or sometimes I'm like, I really don't know how this is going. They're yeah. so far ahead of me. I just can't see where my pacing is really. And I'll just wait until I've touched the wall. Um, whereas say, for example, when I am racing at the bigger meets where I'm just racing my classification, it's a lot better because if I'm leading, then I know, yeah, I'm doing all right. Yeah. Sometimes I may not be leading, you know, on my 400 free. I'm not the fastest out of all the girls there. Um, but for example, in Manchester this year, I knew that I was having a really good race with a person in second place. Nice. I was kind of in third and I was like, if I'm sticking with her, then I know I'm doing, doing all right. Well, yeah. um, and on that last length, it was just a fight for silver because um, the girl who comes first, she's Chinese. Um, she's she's just rapid, you know, <laughs> China, China are amazing with para sport. Um, they just absolutely dominate everything but you know that's just the world of sport and that's just how competitive it is so yeah you do have your own little ways of knowing kind of how things are going most of the time yeah that's great what got you we've gotten three parents was there like an idol were you inspired we've talked about yeah. the 2012 <laughs> yeah do we want to guess who your sporting <laughs> <Go on then. laughs> idol is um yeah so 
obviously my idol is Ellie Simmons. Um, just in so many different ways, you know, got the same disability, she swims, she's female. Um, just so just empowering with everything she's done in para sport. Having someone at the age of 10 to look up to yeah. who's exact, well, not exactly the same, you know, we're both different people, but the same in the sense that we have the same disability. Um, and just smashing just everything, you know, gold medals, just defying everything. And I just think it's so incredible to have, I was so fortunate to have someone like that to, to look up to. to. Yeah. And um, yeah, she's just an amazing person. You spoke about it briefly as well. We said the power of the Paralympics. Yeah. Like it is that funding, it's making sure it's on mainstream TV. Yeah. It's getting you guys out. Yeah. Like, it's incredible. Yeah. I certainly think that awareness of it has certainly grown, yeah. hasn't it, over the last maybe decade or 100%. so. 100%. Um, and have you sort of felt that being within the, the Paralympian team? Have you felt that sort of thing? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, when I first started, um, it was only my swimming coach, um, Sandra from Wellingborough, bless her. Um, she was like, you know, there's para sport and I think you should go and try out this day where like, so Northamptonshire sport, they put on these para days. Um, and that's where I got scouted. And, you know, I was so nervous to go in there because I just didn't really know what to expect. I, for one, I'd never kind of been in an environment with loads of uh, disabled people. I'm, I've been brought up with able-bodied sisters. I went right. to a mainstream school, you yeah. know, didn't know any difference. So being in that environment, I was like, wow, this is really different. Um, but yeah, no, just the way it has grown is incredible. And I've definitely seen it, you know, and I think sometimes I put the pressure on myself a little bit. You know, everyone says to me, you're, new, the, you're the new Ellie Simmons, yeah. you know, you're now the face kind of of para swimming a little bit. Um, I think there's so many other people that are amazing on the team that are also, you know, amazing swimmers and can also be the face of para swimming. But yeah, I think it's just incredible just getting us out there as much as possible. I do think there's still areas, you know, where it could be changed a little bit. Do you? you? Know? Our world championships could have been on the mainstream TVs. Mm -hmm. Like I just think, just show it to everyone. You know, schools were coming along, but Pete is still not there quite. You know, I think there's still some changes, but I think that's just life at the moment. You know, not everything's going to be equal, but hopefully one day we'll get there. Yeah, definitely. It's amazing, definitely. isn't it? <laughs> Which brings us on to EA Sporting yeah. Champs. <laughs> so EA Sporting Champs is at EA Everyone Active. Yeah, it is a collective it's funding scheme it's a sponsorship yeah. scheme it's looking after junior athletes, athletes yeah and you are an ambassador yeah. <laughs> a coach an inspiration <laughs> in it can you tell us how you became involved with the with it to start off with and now what you do from it um yes yeah, so they reached out to me and asked if i'd love to become a mentor um well a sporting champion really um and obviously i said yeah i think it kind of links really well with kind of my teaching you yeah, know yeah. giving advice to people and it just relates to kind of what i said previously about having someone to look up to yeah and i think at that age being a junior athlete having all of these different amazing athletes to give you advice and support like last week when we had uh, a couple of weeks back when we had our awards um evening you know we were giving mentoring days um, and just that advice that they, we can give them is so amazing and they can learn so much from it and hopefully you know that can develop them as an athlete and we've probably got so many potential Olympians and Paralympians Absolutely. on the scheme that are going to achieve incredible things. So, and yeah. these are children. children. Yeah. yeah. They are children yeah. who have found that passion, who have got that edge, who have got the support. Yeah. But maybe just need a little, little bit more. That next step but up. Yeah. how amazing that like you think about the other teams that you are now being able to expose them to and yeah. the meets that you've been to yeah. that you can bring the experience to these kids that are going to go on yeah yeah it's just so amazing for them all learning opportunities and the more they can learn and the more they can develop like I did when I was younger you know going on camps or listening to older athletes and more senior athletes yeah it's really really good and just having access to these amazing facilities as well they've developed so much even from when I yeah, was younger I was gonna say, do, you th do you see a difference from when oh, you yeah. first started out yeah did you have any challenges with 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 your disability when you were younger first starting out in swimming um, or, or not really I guess the only challenge was was when I first started Obviously, I wasn't going to be as fast as people who were my age. Yeah. But in perspective in para swimming, I was higher than the people in my club 
So they the only challenge was they didn't really know where to put me. You know, what right. squad mm -hmm. should we put her in? Should we put her in the squad where there's faster boys and girls who are just going to keep lapping her? Or do we put her in a squad where she's going to be the same kind of speed, but it probably isn't developing her as a swimmer as much? Right. So I think that's where it came to, oh, yeah, maybe we do need some changes here. And I think that's where it came to me moving to Northampton Swimming Club because they had the likes of Ellie Robinson. Right. She was a um, Paralympic champion in Rio, got gold medal there. And um, she was, you know, being put in the top squad, being pushed with all the other amazing swimmers. And I think that's where I was like, yeah, if it's working for her, I think that's what I need yeah. as well. So that's kind of when I made that move. So I guess that's the only challenge. But in the sense of with my disability, I think every club that I've been in, they've just been amazing, you know, except in there's no difference that I've got a disability. I do the same. Well, I change it a, diff a little bit, but I do the same kind of sets every time. Um, and yeah, you know, there's no difference at all. And I think that's really, really good, yeah. That's amazing. And in terms of tr of your training, we've spoken about um, the fact that you're in the pool a heck of a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, any other sort of things that you like to do sort of sport-wise or when you are on not in the pool, do you just want to just chill? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, you know, I'm a sporty person as such with my sport, but I'm not like a sports fan. You know, Understand. I wouldn't just sit down and put the telly on and watch a bit of football or rugby as much as I love watching the women's football and everything like that with the World Cup. Um, yeah, I'm not that sporty. So I think when there's an opportunity not to do sport, I will avoid <laughs> it unless it is swimming because that is the easiest one. But yeah. And what about your training outside then of the pool? Are you aerobicking? Are you strengthening? Um, for swimmers, it's definitely keeping mobile, keeping flexible. Um, you know, we're, we need, our shoulders are moving all the time. Right. Our legs are moving all the time. We need to keep tight and flexible when we're doing our turns, when we're doing our dives. So it's mainly just keeping moving. You know, I, I, I would say I definitely prefer swimming than the gym. Um, I'm in the gym twice a week. Um, I'm not very kind of what's the word, like sports science-y when it comes to the yep. gym and knowing what it means. Um, I get given my programme and I do it. Um, there's like... Perfect. Yeah, Perfect. I do it. <laughs> um, there's like a couple of weight bits, like some back squats. Um, what else do I do in the gym? Core strength. Yeah. It, but most of it is just keeping flexible and keeping flexible. moving because the worst thing of being a swimmer is feeling stiff, feeling tight and not being able to kind of like reach as much in the pool. What's your favourite? Is it is freestyle your favourite or is it breaststroke? What's your favourite? Uh, well, I'm an IM swimmer, so individual right. medley, so I do one of all each. Um, but my best one out of the four is breaststroke. Is yeah, it? 100 breast, yeah. It's my absolute favourite event as well. Like, is it? Yeah, if I could choose one, it would definitely be 100 breast. Why? Yeah. Why, yeah. Um, <laughs> Snap. <laughs> I've just always loved breaststroke. I think, um, funnily enough, kind of runs in the family. My mum was a breaststroker and so was my two sisters and now right. I am. Wow. So I think there is a little bit of genetics in there when it comes to sport. Um, and yeah, I just love it. It's fun. It's one on your front so you can see what other people yeah. are doing. It's, it's quite nosy. Massively coordinated <laughs> yeah. stroke because you have yeah. to get the time. Can we just speak through? So people that don't know what <laughs> breaststroke is. Yeah. Um, how can I describe it? So you do like a round pull under your arm and then once as you finish that arm pull you're doing like frog legs like that yeah kind of how you describe it um so yeah it's probably one of the hardest strokes to get the grasp of and how to actually coordinate it all um and you get the power yeah. from the push of your legs yeah the legs and then the pull through the water yes. with your arms so yeah everything is working so as well as time. being having sort of flexibility through your shoulders obviously hips, hips. and that kind of thing must yeah be and i think that's where i'm pretty good as a breaststroker because uh, of my disability i'm quite hypermobile in my knees right okay so having that flexibility to really get that kind of v position if you want to call it and really whip your legs around i think that is where i have got quite a advantage maybe <laughs> and then how do you train and how do you get yourself used to like your tumble turns or your dives because i guess you could get a second yeah. on somebody through um, that. for me at the moment you know it's just natural it's all natural i've done it for so long that you know say for example on my backstroke when you hit the five meter flags i'm not having to even count when to turn because I've just done it forever. Um, there's still always reminders from our coach, you know, mm. remember to keep tight on your turns, good underwater kicks. Um, but I guess the dives are probably the thing that we focus on more yeah. than our turns because, you know, it's the start of the race, you want to get going. Um, some pools don't have the block facilities that we train in. So, you know, when we do have the facilities to use the blocks, then that's kind of uh, where we go for it a little bit more. Um, but I think it's more, that's all more like the key stuff that you're learning when you're learning to swim or when you're a lot younger. But It's getting that muscle memory, isn't yeah, it, as well? Is that yeah. the speciality that would then come 
if you join a club. So if you join a yes. swim club, that's where the focus comes from rather than your in your lessons. Or yeah, your yeah. Lessons is definitely just learning the basics, learning how to swim, getting the coordination right, breathing, everything it's like that. It's the breathing for me. Yeah. I, can I, I'm, I can do it and then I think... Michelle, you've not actually taken a break. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is attractive for everyone in the water. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, so, yeah. So, children that were starting out, we've spoken a little bit about this in previous episodes, but if they've got a passion for it and they think they've got talent for it, what is their next steps? How would they find that club? How would they find a coach? Like, um, what are top tips? Definitely just, well, you've got the internet now. So I guess it's just Google the, your local swimming clubs, look at the reviews. Um, I think if you go on uh, the Swim England website, sometimes they show um, the aff like affiliated clubs around oh, their area, I think. Okay. Don't quote me on it, but I think. <laughs> um, and yeah, just, just get out there and just try and join a club. Doesn't matter really kind of the ability of the club. They may just be a low level club or they may be a high performing club. Um, and yeah, just to go out there and enjoy it. Don't put too much pressure on yourself because you're so young, you know, you've got so much time left um, to keep trying with it. But yeah, just go and try it. Give it yes. a go. Exciting. <laughs> and have, have the clubs, have they all got, you said you, you, were, you were scouted at quite a young age. Is that quite common within, within swim, um, the swimming community? Yeah, I think so. Um, it's crazy, isn't it? Because that was like Must 11 seem like a years ago. ago yeah. So now, God. Um, but yeah, I think so. Hopefully, like your kind of county kind of sport organization yeah. will hopefully put on a day like that. Um, there's also kind of um, para days I know that Swim England put on sometimes, um, and they'll be really important just to go to, even if you don't want to get in the water, just show your face and just yeah. see what it's all about, just mm -hmm. seeing what para sport is. Um, and yeah, I think it's really important. You know, last Christmas we had a county day where we invited loads of Paris swimmers from the county. Some people got in just for a length. Some people stayed in for the whole two hours. And wow. I think that just shows the freedom of sport, really. You know, everyone can give it a go. It doesn't matter your, dis um, your disability or your ability, really. And as long as you're taking part and just seeing what it's about. Yeah, it's the most yeah. important thing. There's a massive factor as well, isn't it? Yeah. Feeling part of a team. Yeah and being included yeah. and knowing that you're integral to the growth of that team, yeah. but they're also integral to your growth. Yeah. Like that club atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. I love it, yeah. Um, I, I don't think I'd ever be able to move away from like a club atmosphere. You know, there's the performance centers that we've got, which are amazing, but I just love the club atmosphere. You know, I love having 20 other swimmers with me. I love being busy, having people to talk to. Um, we've got so many different kind of, Abilities, if you want to put it, you know, we've got five para swimmers at our club at the moment, which is incredible. When I first started there, we only had me and Ellie. Um, and we've got all other amazing able-bodied athletes who are trying to get to nationals, regionals. And yeah, I, I just love the club atmosphere. Really supportive. We've spoken about this in other episodes, but mindset has a, a, a lot to do with it. How do you really combat that when you wake up in the morning thinking, oh, God, <laughs> it's really dark. It's freezing. Yeah. How do you get past that? Um, yeah, I definitely had it this Tuesday morning when my alarm went off. My mum even said she could hear it going off because it was going <laughs> off for so long. Um, but yeah, I kind of like, ugh, it's always like, oh my goodness, got to get up now. Um, I always said it like two minutes before I actually have to Do get you? up just so, so you I can, can like lay so in bed. you can just contemplate you're getting up now. Yeah. <laughs> Top tip. Yeah. Alarm, but I've actually got two minutes. Yeah. Um, just lay in bed a little bit. Um, <laughs> Then like, right, come on, you've got to get up. Then you open the sheets and it's like freezing. freezing yeah. um, but I think there's just obviously, I don't know what it is, I can't even describe it, but there's obviously something in my belly that keeps me going. Yeah. Um, if I didn't want to do it, I wouldn't bother waking up at four in the morning. Yeah. Um, whether that's I want to go to the next Paralympic Games or I just enjoy swimming that much, I still want to carry on doing it. Um, and when you're there, you know, it's completely fine. Like, there's nothing, it's, you don't even... It's the thought of yeah, it, isn't it? Yeah, it's that first half an hour of waking up, getting in the car. Once you're there, you're fine. You yeah. know, no, going back now, you're here. Yeah, like, yeah. You may as well get in the pool. Um, but yeah, I, I'm relatively chilled around training, you know. Um, but when it comes to competition, my mindset goes on a completely different Does level. It? Yeah, yeah um, I get, I'm someone that gets really nervous. Um, really? I don't know what it's about. Yeah, I, I get really nervous. I think... And Personally how, how far, me, sorry to interrupt you, but how right. far in advance do you feel those nerves when uh, you've got a big meet It depends meet on the comp up? competition. So if it's like a major meet one or two weeks before, I'll, I'll start really? getting really wow. nervous. Yeah. Um, whereas, you know, a couple of weeks back, we had our uh, winter regionals, complete chill. 
I was relaxed, you know, I didn't have anything to be nervous about. I swam well. And even though I've swam well there, I will still be nervous in a couple of weeks' time, probably, whenever we've got our next competition. So, yeah. Sometimes those nerves can fire you. Though, yeah, I they? think that's the thing that I am I need to remember, that, you know, there's I'm not being nervous in a bad way. Mm. I need to use them in a good way. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I'm being nervous because I want to do well and I love my sport. And I think that's what I've got to keep reminding myself, remembering the positive reasons yeah. why I'm nervous and not think about the negative reasons, even though, you know, there's that little person in my mind being like freaking out, like, oh, what are you <laughs> going to do? Um, but no, yeah. I and I think as well, part of it is the more I'm becoming a senior athlete, I think I'm getting more nervous. Really? I think, yeah, I think is I put a lot of, of pressure on myself. Yeah. Right. And I know there's no expectation from everyone else, you know, my coaches, my mum, everyone around me, like, there's no pressure. Like, you've done everything you've wanted to ever do. Like, there's no pressure. But deep down inside of me, obviously, I still want to achieve more and I still want to do well. And, you know, I think as well, you've put so much time and effort into the sport. It's yeah. like, I need to do well because I need to show that all this time and dedication that I've put into this sport and missing going and seeing, seeing my friends, missing going and doing family things. I want to prove to them that this has paid it's off. This is why it. I've yeah. missed out. Um, so, yeah, there's loads of different elements, I think, to why I get nervous. But hopefully something I'll, I'll just deal with and keep going with it. <laughs> What's next, big goal? Um, definitely Paris 2024. Ooh, um, exciting. Yeah. I just can't believe how fast it's come around. I know. You know, like three, I, yeah. three years basically since Tokyo. And yeah, it's just flown by. Um, but yeah, Paralympic Games. Obviously, I don't want to put pressure on myself in that sense, but I'd love to come away with another medal, maybe another two medals. Um, I think it'd be absolutely insane to defeat my titles. If I did, it'd be like, oh, I'd be over the moon. Um, I remember saying that when I won my medal. I was like, wow, this is just insane. <laughs> um, but yeah, it would be, yeah, I'd be really, really happy. Deep down, that is my goal, you know, That's to funny. defeat my titles. Um, How's the squad looking for it? Um, Strong team? Yeah, definitely. Um, you never really know who's going to be on the team literally until yeah. April or sometimes, you know, they add a few people on. So uh, for Japan, we um, added on my teammate, Will Perry. Um, he he was like managed to get another qualifying time a bit later on. So that was brilliant. Um, so you won't really know until a couple of months before. Um, but no, we've got a really, really st strong team. Um, Stephen Clegg is an amazing swimmer. Hopefully he was like fingernails away from getting was the gold he? last year, oh, wow. uh, last year, last time. Um, who else we got? Tony Shaw. There's, there's too many to name, but um, yeah. And the five swimmers oh, that we've got at home in Northampton as well. Five um, from Northampton? Yeah, hopefully. Oh, got, uh, wow. Me, Scarlett and Eliza, they're two VI swimmers, so they're S11. So um, they've got um, no vision at all, basically. Wow. Um, yeah, they're an inspiration as well to swim wow, alongside. Yeah. yeah, you know, that you know they don't want to be treated any differently, of course, but the way that they swim is it's just incredible, you know. Um, got Bruce, he's got the same condition as me, and we've got an amazing relationship when we train, you know. Oh. He'll be... Yeah, he's really pushed me on this year. And uh, we've got a girl called Amber. She's an S10 swimmer. Um, so she's got an impairment with her legs at the bottom of her legs. So, yeah, we've got a really, really strong team, which hopefully it'll be amazing if we get all of us from Northampton yeah, on the team. Yeah, it will be. But, yeah. Team Northampton. But come on. Big push, come on. but yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so exciting. Yeah. Amazing, amazing, so, yeah, amazing. All good. But also, how fabulous that you've said that so the Paralympics were split into the categories around yes, that disability, yeah. but even they're growing. And the amount yeah. of people that are now like, being able to partake in 100%. competitive sport yeah, yeah. is phenomenal. Yeah, yeah it's, it's amazing. amazing, yeah. You know, Scarlett and Liza, they're the first two S11 swimmers that we've had as GB, I think, since like 1990-odd, I want to say. Wow. They've been breaking some British records that have stood since maybe the 80s or the 90s. Oh, so gosh. it just shows now that, you know, we're getting more of them... Um, How more old of are them they? in uh, 18. So, Good. yes. You probably inspired them. Well, they always say that, but I'm oh. like, nah, girls, come on, you've been inspired by other people. But um, no, I'd, li I'd like to think that, you know, I do inspire them every day Definitely. and training alongside them. And they inspire me as well. The things that they achieve is incredible. So, yeah, all good. Amazing. Good luck to you, <laughs> We're rooting for you. Yes. <laughs> Thank oh. you so much for coming Thank in. You we really, really me. have been so inspiring and so it's interesting. Good. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Know You're that welcome. we are in your corner. We're sharing yeah. for you. And also, when you're getting out of your car, know that Joe lives right around <laughs> <Yeah>. the corner. <laughs> yeah, Joe, Joe. <laughs> Behind the bush, just looking. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Hello. Go, Amazing.
was it? <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, thank you so, so much for coming thank in. Thank you. Thank you. And that's all we've got nice. time for today. It is. But team, this could have a lot of questions. Yes. Like so anything, EA Sporting Champs, yeah. how we're getting into swimming, Paralympic competitions, yeah. anything, email us in podcast at everyoneactive.com well remembered me yes <laughs> or follow us on instagram facebook and we can get messages through and if there's questions for macy including the can you come and work at our primary school type question oh, yes yes <laughs> get that plugged as well yeah. <laughs> honestly what an inspiring teacher can you imagine wow it'd be phenomenal I don't but please 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 like us review us share this share this podcast yeah please and if there do are questions send email them in, in message them in and we will see you next time thank take you. care team and thank you so thank much thank you so much really really nice to chat to you thank you take care bye. thanks guys bye, bye.